What a time to be alive. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new around here, my name is Haley, and today I am going to be doing something that I have wanted to do for a while. Today I am rereading my favorite childhood book series, The Click. These were my favorite books throughout elementary school and middle school. I ate these up. I used to have the complete collection, but over the years, I have no idea where those went. Probably donated, most likely. But I have been trying to hunt them down and collect them once again through websites like Pango Books or like Half Price Books. I am getting there. I'm well on my way. But in today's video, I'm just going to be focusing on the first three and kind of see if these still hold up. Because if you're unfamiliar with the series, first of all, you're majorly missing out. This was like Gossip Girl for eight-year-olds. Basically, the entire series revolves around this friend group called the Pretty Committee. There's really four main girls that are in this friend group, but in the first book, it introduces Claire. She's not really like the rest of them, but she does essentially become a member of this group. This book is basically snobby preteen girls. They come from extremely wealthy families and go to a very exclusive private girls school all in Westchester, New York. And the ringleader of this group is Massey. With her glossy brunette bob and her laser whitened smile, Massey is the uncontested ruler of the clique and the rest of the social scene at Octavian Country Day School. Massey knows you'd give anything to be just like her. And honestly, back in the day, even though she is definitely kind of the worst. <laughs> then we have Dylan, Massey's second in command, who divides her time between sucking up to Massey and sucking down Atkins Diet Shakes. And this is where things don't necessarily hold up because this was just probably not the best message as a young girl. Then we have Alicia Rivera, who I really loved her. <laughs> as sneaky as she is beautiful, Alicia floats easily under adult radar because she seems so sweet. She would love to take Massey's throne one day. And she just might. And then we have Kristen Gregory, who's smart, hardworking, and will insult you to tears faster than you can say, my haircut isn't ugly. So those are the main four. Enter Claire Lyons, and this is where things get rocky. She's the new girl from Florida in Keds and two-year-old Gap overalls, which is clearly not click material. And unfortunately for her, her family is staying in the guest house at Massey's house. Claire's future looks worse than a bad Prada knockoff, but with a little luck and a lot of scheming, Claire might just come up smelling like Chanel number 19. So that's kind of the gist but these are all pretty short this is 220 pages 197 and this one's the longest at 296 these are definitely written for like 10 year old girls so they'll be they'll be pretty easy reads <laughs> page 57 right now wanted to update because this is bringing back so many memories this book is very satirical like mean girls this was published in like 2004 so some of the things are just like crazy problematic right now like especially there's one character dylan who is always like on a diet and needing to lose weight and they're always telling her she's fat like that would not fly but massey's one-liners still hold up like there's the iconic claire did I invite you to my barbecue? Then why are you all up in my grill? And I am certain that I used that one many a times. But there was also one that was like, did I ask you to check my temperature? Then why are you all up my butt? It's just, <laughs> it's so funny. But they are extremely mean to Claire. Just like Regina George and Katie Heron. Poor Claire, she's just in her little kids. But I wasn't sure when I started these again if this was going to be like painful because this is like written for middle schoolers. But I am having a good time. <laughs> just finished the first book and it was honestly a delightful little afternoon read. I also looked it up and 2004 is the same year that Mean Girls came out, which I thought was funny because this is basically the same exact storyline. New girl comes to town, joins the school, sees that everyone is clicked up, specifically the Mean Girls. This time's a little bit different because she's like quite literally living in like the Regina George's backyard. Same thing where she tries desperately to fit in, she sabotages the main girl, gets that group of friends on her side, it all comes crashing down in her face, and the main girl is once again loved by all. Except the ending in this one, 
Massey and Claire end on like a semi-friendly note. Massey has her state of the union ins and outs list and Claire's name lands right in between. This was really fun. I don't remember ever taking this book very seriously when I was younger. It's not like it left some sort of impression on me in my youth, but there is definitely a lot of like questionable eyebrow raising sort of things mentioned in here. The amount of times that weight is mentioned, they definitely give Dylan a lot of shit in here because she's the bigger girl. She's described as like two inches taller, two inches wider. It's very prevalent in this book and I think that really speaks for the time that this was written in. Obviously, I do feel bad for Claire and I totally get the wanting to fit in even though you don't necessarily like these girls you want to be part of them or at least liked by them but it definitely brought back a lot of memories for me i just remember being like holed up in my room or like at my grandparents house reading these books so it's very nostalgic but uh yeah i'm gonna start the second one in this series and i'll keep you guys updated on how it goes but i I think they're fun still. Okay, I'm halfway through Best Friends for Never. The whole storyline is that Massey wants to have a boy-girl Halloween party. But the only way she can get her parents on board is if she pretends to co-host and be friends with Claire. Leading up to the party, because Claire's mom thinks that her and Massey are friends, she's like, okay, join in on their costume idea because the pretty committee is going as their dirty devils which is literally just like a ripped tank top a micro mini and some devil horns and a tail like girl give us nothing if i was as filthy rich as these girls my costume would be 10 out of 10. The girls ended up wearing it to school the morning of the costume party which i just feel like is another faux pas why would the cool girls wear their costume instead of just doing like a big reveal the night of the party mm. anyways they got in a ton of trouble because their costumes did not abide by the dress code and now Kristen can't go to the party. Also the whole idea of this party was taken from another girl in their grade that was trying to have a boy girl party. Apparently that girl was trying to declare that Massey was on her way out. Obviously Massey could not allow that to happen and threw the party first. And simultaneously while all this is going on Claire and Massey have a bet. One that Claire won't outfit repeat and Massey can't go shopping. And the first one to break the bet has to wear like a snowboard suit to school for like two weeks. So that's what's going on here. Rather riveting. I'm still enjoying it, but I will say that the first one was pretty unmatched. Like the zingers were just so good in that one. There really hasn't been much going on in here yet. That's all I got though. <laughs> They just made a reference in here to the old school Steve Madden ads with like the big heads and the little tiny bodies and that alone brought back so many memories. I think Steve Madden also just recently did a campaign like kind of bringing that style back. Those were iconic. Okay, the DJ is playing Hot In Here by Nelly and giving away two iTunes gift certificates to the person with the best dance moves. That is so 2004. So because the girls wore their Halloween costumes to school, now the school is enforcing uniforms, but they're doing a contest where the girls kind of design their own and they have a contest and whoever wins gets to have their uniform be the uniform of the school. The girls are shopping right now trying to find an outfit for the fashion show and Kristen is like, can we get into A&F? I need to go get their new shopping bag for my wall. I swear this book is such a time capsule because there was truly a point where you would go over to your friend's house for a sleepover and then their wall would have like Victoria's Secret pink shopping bags and Abercrombie and just like everything lining their wall. <laughs> it was a really weird time. I had kind of forgotten about that <laughs> weird trend until this and it just cracked me up. Massey and Claire are actually on a team designing their uniform because something happened with both of their projects. It was accidentally thrown away so they don't have enough time to do it individually so they have teamed up for real this time. The back of the third book said that Claire becomes part of the pretty committee, so I think we're getting there. Okay, I just finished book two and it had the audacity to leave me on a cliffhanger. Although it did leave me with Claire being declared in. 
but her and Massey have a crush on the same guy right now, so that may be short-lived. I was shocked. It ended very abruptly. <laughs> and then in the back of the book, there's like a Q&A. It's actually, it's really funny, by the way. Like one of the questions is, how are you able to write for seventh graders when you are clearly no longer in seventh grade? But one of the questions was how many books Lissy Harrison had planned for the whole series, and she already had eight books planned out. That's crazy. Moving on to the third one, Revenge of the Wannabes. And I think I kind of remember this one. In this book, Alicia becomes friends with this girl, Olivia, and they're kind of like doing their own thing right now outside of the Pretty Committee. So I think there's a divide in this book. Okay, I think this is where the series starts to get really good because now we have Alicia's point of view and a little bit more in depth into her life, what her bedroom looks like, stuff like that. And the book kind of starts off with her wanting to separate herself from Massey and just kind of always feeling like she's in her shadow, which has been talked about in the first two books. Like Massey acknowledges that Alicia has kind of wanted to be the main girl. But it seems like she's trying to forge her own path in this book. But I remember like as the series goes on, you get more into each pretty community member's life. My favorite was Kristen. I always found her really relatable. She seemed like more down to earth. She comes from like a less fortunate family. She's on scholarship, but she played soccer. I played soccer for like 12 years. So she was one of my favorites. But anyways, the first two books, it's just Massey and Claire and their point of views and their back and forth. So I like getting more of each character. Okay, my neighbors are screaming. I just had to stop at this part because Alicia is currently at the Teen People office and these are the current trends. Colorful ponchos. My third grade yearbook picture is me in like a pastel blue poncho. What a time to be alive. Blazers dotted with sparkly brooches. Juicy sweats in brand new colors. That is very back right now. Ballet flats with fuzzy pom-poms. The ballet flats are back, but bows instead of pom-poms and knee-high uggs with mini skirts honestly i wonder if the taller uggs are gonna make a comeback right now we're all into like the very like low mini uggs i've seen a few of like the midi uggs with like the bailey bows coming back but knee-high uggs i definitely remember at the time i had knockoff uggs i was not allowed to have uggs when i was in elementary school but i wore like a mini denim skirt with my uggs like some like justice leggings probably and a sparkly tank top and like a sequined limited to or maybe it was justice bag and i wore that for my picture with santa it was very Ashley Tisdale coded at the time okay the poncho thing really brings me back i never want to see those again I just finished Revenge of the Wannabes and basically this whole book is Alicia trying to overthrow Massey and create her own version of the Pretty Committee. Of course, calling it the Unbelievably Pretty Committee. And in doing so, she recruits all these other girls that look like or are somehow similar to the original girls from the Pretty Committee. So she kind of has like her own little knockoff group. And she actually marks her knockoff friend group with knockoff Louis Vuitton scarves that she found in new york on the streets on the sidewalks this by the way felt very out of character for alicia because this whole time we're being told that she loves labels she's only decked out in designer and she even mentions when she finds the scarf it's her friend that wants to buy them to begin with she's like grossed out by these fake scarves and yet she still like hands them out as like okay wear this to let everybody know that you're with me it's really odd it feels very strange for her character so her new friend group is at odds with the og pretty committee because she actually cheated on the uniform competition and rigged the votes or switched the ballots but it's okay because when she tells teen people that she cheated and she feels guilty about it they're like okay and nothing actually happens and both friend groups end up getting involved in some sort of modeling campaign for teen people. Throughout all of that chaos, Alicia enlists Claire's sneaky little brother to eavesdrop on their conversations and he finds out all of these deep secrets that Kristen and Dylan and Mazzy didn't want to share and spreads them like Mazzy is the one doing it so that everybody turns on her and is pissed. So there's like a lot of feuding and friendships breaking up throughout this book. But of course, at the end, everybody is a happy family. The faux pretty committee gets shrugged off. We're over them. We don't need them anymore. And we move on. We end on a good note. Claire is officially part of the pretty committee. I have a lot of thoughts on these books, just like 
as a whole, the whole series. But this one specifically, I told you guys, obviously, these didn't age well. There's problematic themes and wording and stuff like that throughout here. But what I find or found most alarming in this book is in all of them and throughout the rest of the series, there is just so much emphasis on like how hot Alicia is. And keep in mind, she's a 12 year old girl. And they're like, oh yeah, I just, I know I look sexy in this. And like, <laughs> It's so crazy. But they're always talking about how big her boobs are and specifically how uncomfortable she, with that she is. So she's always like crossing her arms and hiding them and it's just like a big deal that she does not want to acknowledge them. She's not, she's not comfortable with them. But it's brought up constantly. In this book, there is this guy Harrison, which is Cam Fisher's older brother. Cam is a dude that both Massey and Claire had a crush on throughout this book and who Claire ends up dating throughout, I think like the rest of the series, like they're on and off. And Massey actually ends up with who Dylan and Kristen were both crushing on throughout this book, Darrington, Derek Harrington or something. They call him Darrington. Anyways, Cam is a regular 12 year old boy. He's in the same grade. He just goes to Briarwood, which is the boys private school. But his brother is an 11th grader and he, like talks about how hot Alicia and Massey are and like invites Alicia over and he ends up using her for concert tickets because her dad has the hookup, he has the connects, but I just felt like that was so uncomfortable. No 11th grade guy hopefully is hanging around with a 12 year old girl and acknowledging that she's hot. That was super icky. Also, no 12 year old girl is hot. Anyways, with that being said, I still, I still like these series, but by no means does that mean that like I approve of everything that's written in this book, especially now. A lot of it did not age well, nor do I think a lot of it was okay at the time either, but it's definitely satirical. Like the way these girls speak and like the clictionary of it all, their own like phrasing and how they say certain words like, it's supposed to be making fun of like that valley girl vibe mocking them and their bratty behavior so i will say it is definitely still an entertaining read even like 15 ish years later and i know i brought up like the mean girls analogy but it just fits really well with this book because we have massey the regina george she is like the anti-hero of it all the it girl you love to hate her and then you have claire the new girl aka katie heron and most of the time i do feel bad for claire they're awful to her especially in the first book it's so ridiculous like putting red paint on her white pants so that it looks like she got her period and just like mean petty things but claire doesn't get better throughout the series, honestly, she gets worse because you were rooting for her in these books, but I remember as the series goes on, she's not, like she kind of becomes everything that she detests. Even in this third book, she's just like very spineless, like following one leader of the pack to the next. She stuck up for herself more in the first book, but I just feel like she so badly wants to be accepted and part of the group, which, can you blame her? Especially a 12 year old girl, me too. But as a character, she's just kind of meh. I like Alicia. I remember liking her a lot when I was reading these when I was younger and being jealous of like, she just seemed like very beautiful, always wearing cool clothes. And like, obviously so does Massey, but Alicia seems like the nicer version. So she's a little bit more palatable, I guess, even though she definitely wants to be liked by everyone as well and she would love to be the main person in power but obviously that didn't bode well for her then we have Kristen and dylan dylan is the one with the massive eating disorder who's always on crash diets and she i never really found her likable throughout the rest of the series she's kind of like the the frumpy friend she's always burping and kind of gross and then the dieting thing of it all she's just not particularly a fun character and like her own only real redeeming quality is her mom is famous she's like a famous talk show host but Kristen I also really liked because I found her relatable but through rereading these her and Dylan are just like the minions of the group they don't really have a personality 
of their own. It's like, okay, Dylan's fat and Kristen's poor, you know? And I do think that they get bigger personalities as the series goes on and you get a peek into their lives. Like with this one, we got a lot of Alicia. And then there's also Lane, who I don't know if I even mentioned, but she is Claire's like only friend. She's still friends with Lane, I think throughout the rest of the series, but definitely in these two books as well. But as soon as Massey or like the friend group wants to let her in and she's part of the pretty committee, she instantly ditches Lane. Like Katie and Janice again from Mean Girls. It's the same vibe. Like she loves Lane until something better comes along. Again, another thing I don't really like about Claire. So that's kind of my breakdown on these three books and the characters. And I gotta say, I really liked it. Like I kind of want to continue rereading the rest of the series. Like I said earlier, it's kind of like a time capsule of all the trends and things that were popular at the time and it just really hits you with a big wave of nostalgia. Like I just remember so many nights spent reading this in my room. I loved these books so much. I would get so excited to go and buy a new one. It felt like there was always a new one out. So I had a lot of fun. And I hope that you guys had fun watching this vlog and maybe going down memory lane with these books. Let me know what you think. And also if you plan on rereading these anytime soon. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye.